In this presentation, we're going to talk about the internet, one of the seven big ideas in the computer science principles curriculum. So first, the internet, when using a capital I here, is this global public network of independent and autonomous networks that are governed by the internet protocol suite. So a couple of key points here, as you can see from the image, it's a network of networks. So there may be a network that you have at home, a network that you connect to through your internet service provider, like your cable company or your phone company, um, and then a network at work, etc. All of those together that are public make up the internet. All right. Each of them are governed by what is called the internet protocol suite. A protocol is simply a system of rules that govern the behavior of some system. So if you think about diplomatic protocol or etiquette, so when a dignitary comes um, from a foreign country to visit the United States, there are certain rules for um, how you greet them, the appropriate amount of space to stand away from each other, and it's different depending on which, um, which country you're in or who you're working with. So protocol here is just that system of rules, and there are a number of different protocols um, that are used with the internet. That internet protocol is the primary one um, for how information is transferred on those networks. So Wikipedia defines the internet as a global system of interconnected computer networks that use the internet protocol suite, which is made up of two protocols called TCP and IP. Um, you don't need to know the details of those, but they are used to communicate, to send information on the network. The internet is a network of networks, so it's not like there's one single network out there that represents the internet, but it is millions of private, public, academic, business, and government networks that are all linked by a whole variety of um, different kinds of networking technologies. The internet includes um, not just that hardware layer, but it also includes the interlocked hypertext documents and applications of the World Wide Web that we'll talk about more in just a minute, as well as the infrastructure that's used to support email, being able to send and receive emails, and the peer-to-peer -peer networks for file sharing and telephony, so being able to um, make phone calls using voice over IP or phone calls over the internet, or being able to share files with each other um, through FTP. Some of the applications that um, are related to being able to collaborate on the internet include um, Dropbox for sharing files, Skype for making telephone calls, Wikispaces for being able to um, post wikis that people can collaboratively edit documents, uh, the World Wide Web itself, Wigio is a tool that you might have used in your classrooms to be able to send text messages that show up on a website, um, Google Docs are a collaborative um, collaborative tool or a collaborative application on the internet. So let's look at the differences between the internet and the World Wide Web in some more detail now. We've already said that the internet is a network of networks that uses the internet um, protocol suite to communicate. Well, a common misconception is that the World Wide Web is the internet, but in reality they are not the same thing. So the internet is not the World Wide Web. The World Wide Web is an application that runs on top of the internet. So the web is a collection of documents, web pages, images, and other kinds of resources, um, script files, that kind of thing, that are stored on the internet. And then the internet is that network or network or the hardware underneath that um, the World Wide Web can use to communicate or send that information to um, various computers. So the World Wide Web itself is not a network. It uses the internet as its network. So the web is what we call an application service that runs on top of the internet. It's based on the hypertext transfer protocol. So on the web, you have hypertext documents or HTML documents. If you look at your URLs, um, your web addresses of the web pages that you're looking at, you'll see that they often start with HTTP or HTTPS. That stands for Hypertext Transfer Protocol. And it's just the rules for how you send hypertext documents on the internet. So internet applications, again, are governed by protocols. Um, HTTP is not the only one. Email uses what's called Simple Mail Transfer Protocol, SMTP, or Post Office Protocol, POP. 
uh, file transfer is done using the file transfer protocol, FTP. Instant messaging can be done using the internet relay chat protocol. And telephony or voice over IP um, is another protocol that's used to be able to send telephone calls over the internet. So there are a number of different protocols associated with the internet. HTTP is the one that gets used to send um, web documents back and forth. So these are all what we call distributed applications because they run on a network and not on a single computer. The World Wide Web was invented by Tim Berners-Lee. One of the um, unique features about the World Wide Web was that when he created it, instead of patenting it as an invention, he made his idea freely available with um, out royalties. So anybody was able to create and use the protocols that he set up and the languages that he created in, um, as part of the World Wide Web. So this, um, for him, the World Wide Web brought the internet to um, a higher level of abstraction. And here's a quote from him that I will let you read on your own, but just to highlight the last part, it was a step of generalizing, going to a higher level of abstraction, thinking about all the documentation systems out there as being possibly part of a larger imaginary documentation system. So the World Wide Web allowed um, anybody who was using it to access web documents, documents that were out there on the web. So um, when he created this uh, system and he didn't patent it but made it openly available, it's something called an open standard and it's one of those um, one of many examples that characterize the internet. So why was it open? So internet is fundamentally based on the existing existence of open, non-proprietary standards. They're key to allowing devices, services, and applications to work together across a wide and dispersed network of networks. So if you come back to that idea of the internet being a network of networks and that each network might be owned by somebody else, they still need to have a common way to communicate. So as long as the protocols are open and the standards are open, then everybody can use them and they don't have to have proprietary or specific ones for their business that makes it difficult to communicate across networks. Um, open standards are not proprietary, meaning they're not owned by any corporation. They're created and managed through a public process um, using international communities and committees such as the International Engineering Task Force and the World Wide Web Consortium. Usually in the process, um, these committees will come up with a draft of a standard, they'll release it for public comment, then there'll be some revisions, they may go through a draft process again and more commenting until they come up with the final standard. And depending on how fast technology is changing, they may update this every couple of years or it might take longer for those kinds of um, standards to be updated. Because the web is based and the internet is based on open standards, it has really allowed the internet to grow exponentially because everybody can have access to those standards to build their own part of the internet and the World Wide Web. So you can see um, this map just or this graph just goes from 1994 to 2013, but how the um, internet has grown exponentially, just increasing. Um, quite quickly over that amount of time and open standards were a key component for the growth of the internet.